right? Because normally Mother Nature takes care of it with lightning strikes regularly, just like at the Lassen, the National Lassen Volcanic Park near where I am. But they allow the lightning strike fires to, to burn, and that way it just burns the, um, the low-growing material that comes up every year, like the grasses and whatnot, and it spares the old-growth ponderosa trees. So they know what they're doing. They're managing it properly, and somehow we've got to figure a way to do that and just be ready for a fire to start. I mean, they, they can't hit every one of us. I mean, you know, this idea of a directed laser beam that could ignite fires is is, is very conceivable. Uh, and, and I know that there's people that are that evil that would do that. Okay, especially if they want, if it was like an evil, uh, deviant, diabolical plan by a group that was targeting a certain neighborhood. They said, well, these people are living in harmony too much up in this town and they're getting along too good. So, you know, let, let's pick on them. Um, transmi uh, uh, the uh, PG&E has taken the heat for a transmission line that was arcing, uh, but then they say there might be a secondary source, and that's what they're looking into. So that would explain any kind of a laser that could have ignited this fire. We're getting rain today, finally. We're completely parched. We've had not even a half inch of rain all season, but um, God Almighty. You know, a day late and a dollar short, huh? But uh, hey... Listen, folks, I know I'm all over the page, and look, it's important that uh, people understand the spiritual connection and the economic connection and the imperative nature of understanding, having basic knowledge that nobody can refute. I don't give a crap about their Harvard degrees or their PhDs. Look, if you're interested and you really want to know the truth, the whole truth, and nothing tr but the truth, buckle up. Okay, because I can share it with you. I can tell you the score, but it's traumatic. Okay, because you have to put all politics aside, all this crap. you got to say, God first, man. It's, I have to be bent on seeing things through God's eyes. And he will not keep you from it. You ask for something good like that, say, God, if I have wrong beliefs, wrong opinions about anything, controversial or otherwise, okay, then you give me the right opinion, the right belief about this thing, because it is a charged issue. I'm very conflicted about how to perceive this thing, how to believe this thing. Perception being reality, so it's very powerful. Our belief systems are things we fight and die for that we're very emotional and very passionate about. You understand we all have that, and help me, God, to understand what they're doing to us, how they're operating, this division in the land, where it's emanating from, okay, and how, what's the catalyst for make, making it work? Okay, what are they doing to us? The red and the blue, do you understand? Yo, you're a conservative and a liberal. You guys will never get together. You never see eye to eye. Your problems are insurmountable. They're overwhelming. Oh, my God, you're a capitalist. Oh, no, you know, you're, you're, you're a loser, and, and I'm always wrong. you're always wrong. And look at the evidence. And, 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 and then the same thing with the... the, the uh, the uh, conservative, liberal, the Democrat and Republican thing, right? We, we, I mean, they, they, they know what the hell they're doing here. This division is keeping us off balance, weakening us. It's making us feeble and ineffectual, feckless. Okay, so we can't unite around common interests because human beings have a hell of a lot more in common than out. Okay, that's just a matter of fact. I mean, just think, all the things that you want for your family, Consider the fact that everybody else all around the world wants those same things for their families. So are you going to sit there all smug and you're going someday and say, no, it's okay that it's like this, that, you know, certain people are privileged and certain people can have and it's okay that others have not and I can't worry about somebody's problem. They're going to have to fight for justice themselves, work hard. And I, I don't know, but I, I've got to divorce myself from their problems. Okay, I can't deal with it. That's what a lot. Are you going to face God like that, or are you going to do something that proves you give a damn? Okay, because it is not the stupidest people that are being picked on. Oftentimes, it's the smartest people because the nicest people are the smartest people, and one whole hell of a lot of them are poor. They don't fit in. They're the ones that hate the system the way it is. It's like being coerced, being forced to play a rigged game. Who the hell? I do not want to play a game with you. There's cheating going on. 
And that's all this so-called capitalism is. It isn't true capitalism. It has nothing to do with supply and demand principles, free market, okay? It has nothing to do. There's no competition in it. There's no risk involved. You've got the plunge protection team on Wall Street. Everybody's, oh, it's okay. And, oh, we've got a critical mass of people that have 401ks. And so they appease a certain segment, a certain population, just that critical mass, enough to get the job done and keep going on this trajectory of death and destruction. The ship of fools careening to destruction. Things get worse and worse. We stay on this trajectory and people go along with the flow, the path of least resistance. And it's killing people. Literally, you're killing people all around the world. America's policies are screwing things up for everybody. If we've got unsound economic policies here, they're going to, through osmosis, they're going to be transposed upon the rest of the world. We're the trendsetter. People are counting on us. And when we fail, then they feel an instinct to come here and say, hey, well, you know what? You can't get it. And sometimes we attract the most mad dog anti-capitalists and people that just say, you know what, I don't care about anything except making gobs of dough, man. And so they just they just dominate through their aggression and, and determination that, hey, I came from land. You don't know what you got here in America, the land of opportunity. And, and so some of these people that immigrate here, they just go whole hog and, 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 and make money hand over fist and don't care about the native sons and daughters. I mean, we are in so much trouble, my God almighty. That's what I really want to convey is just jump ship. The sooner the better. And what does that mean? At least in your own heart and mind, you could be ready for God's will to be done. You could be zealous for God's will to be done. And you can know exactly what that means. So you can be preparing your heart and mind, your spirit, your soul, and your body for the world tomorrow that God is going to enact he is going to bring it to fruition one way or another, sooner or later, okay, the Lord's will, God's will, the will of our divine parents, our owner, our creator, God Almighty is going to be established on earth. Thank God for all those that hunger and thirst for righteousness to be the ruling of the land. Those are the ones that are going to be filled. So that's what I'm imploring people to do, encouraging people to do, inspiring people to do, provoking people to do, whatever I have a method God puts on my heart, however to speak, I'll do it. Because I know I'm going to get my reward. I'm already getting it just by doing this. I don't need to be paid. I, just want, I want to be happy. And I realize I cannot go it alone. I've got to care about others that, that don't seem to have a voice. Okay? Or it's just too small. It doesn't mean that they're, that they're less righteous than me. It doesn't mean that they're less intelligent. It doesn't mean that they're less decent. Okay? It just means that's the way it is, and I've got to be their voice. And I know there's better people than me that just are just really being trampled on, okay? The downtrodden, and it sickens me, it hurts me, and I, God knows if I cannot sleep at night if I don't do anything. And conversely, I can sleep very well at night if I do something about it. And this is what I'm doing about it. I'm speaking out and telling people under no uncertain terms the difference between true capitalism and this crap we've got going on here. You do not see a growing wealth disparity, okay? Am I saying that I believe in socialism and taking from the haves and giving to the have-nots, wealth redistribution, prescribing to the tax and spend, Robin Hood theory? No, not at all, okay? But if I throw out one solution to thwart these idiots at the top like basic income, and, and people, oh, my God, he's a freaking liberal, communist, socialist. Oh, my God, he's a nutcase. I, he, it's because you've been trained. I say that, and you're just turned off. You're offended. You put up a wall of defense. You won't even hear me out. And I'm telling you, you're no fiscal conservative if you're opposed to that. Do you know how many taxes you spend because of the problems created in society from desperate poverty? Do you understand? Do you understand what's going on here? And then the safety of society. The safety of society, even to my daughters, their odds of being raped are far greater because of desperate poverty. Did you know that? That's who you are, and you need to take the blame. You're not a fiscal conservative. You're the, you don't believe in a basic income as one solution. Admit it, it's a solution to thwart these a-holes at the top, and we need checks and balances. We can't have the Labor Department saying, oh, no, we don't need to give a cost of living adjustment, even though your cost of living had soared in the last 5, 10, 15, 20 years. In this case, I'm, I'm looking at 55 years this has been going on. Okay? So 
the basis and the justification for basic income is say it through God's eyes. Look through God's eyes. What would you do? You say, no, let's see this level is playing field. You want to play hardball? Let's get crazy. Okay, that's what it's like. It's just basically it's an extension of Social Security. That just from 18 on up, you never have to live insecure of having your basic needs met. Your food, your shelter, your energy needs. And, and we should have clean energy. We need to talk about disruptive technology. Okay, but and, and clean water. Okay, so those basic things are something, yes, I believe we should have met. And that's one way to thwart these idiots. And no, we're not going to have hyperinflation. It's going to be really good for the economy. As you see all that trajectory of the currency, the cash flow, and this, your local communities, and people start feeling secure, they say, screw them. Why would I raise my prices now? I'm not a greedy piece, piece of crap. Okay, piss ant. I, I, I'm going to uh, lower my prices. I'm making more money. And, and Joe Blow just lowered his price. So you know what? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling free. I'm feeling secure. I'm feeling happy. Okay? Do you understand the effect a basic income would have? Crime plummets overnight. But then you say, oh, well, all those people employed in the criminal industrial complex would lose their jobs or security. would be rendered irrelevant if the crime plummeted. So you're going you're gonna to defend it? You're going you're gonna to say that's okay and the taxes you pay? So don't call yourself fiscal conservative. I'm sure as hell don't call yourself a Christian. Okay. Do you understand what would happen to the money lending business, the debt industrial complex, this national debt? All that crap would subside, dissipate in short order. All of it. The dubious warfare does impossible to get their dubious war started. People would research the wars they decided to go to. The welfare industrial complex, uh, dry up. And people say, well, there's an enormous amount of jobs that revolve around that, the desperate poverty then that's emanating from desperate poverty. You say, yes, that's true. Do you understand? Okay, that's a matter of fact. Prove me wrong. If you think I'm nuts, show me. Let's try it. We, why have we been going? Explain why we've been going the opposite direction for at least 55 years since the assassination of JFK. Explain that to me if I'm wrong. Explain that. Why do we need to keep going down this path? Why is it so unreasonable that a minimum wage worker says, look, I'm just trying to stay even Stephen here. Okay, I'm not, I'm not greedy. I'm willing to do this job. I'm a janitor. I'm scrubbing toilets and all this. I, I'm cooking your food. I, I'm working in, in the grocery store. I'm working in factories. I'm working in the convenience store, risking my neck. I'm doing this, that, and the next thing out there. I mean, God, how many minimum wage jobs are there? And there's so many employers, you said, hey, you're making two bucks more than minimum wage. You're doing good. And it's like, oh, my God, if you do the math and you look at the buying power of $1 55 years ago and then look at the buying power of $40 today, you'd realize that's how much you'd have to be making. Do you understand? And that's barely, if at all, exaggerated, hyperbolic, okay, or overstated. This is math I'm talking about. It's an inarguable science. You can't argue with the statistics, the fact. You can't. So explain to me how this was not by deliberation and it's all by just incompetence and oversight. Uh, uh, you know, uh, we, we, didn't, we didn't see it coming. Okay, it was just an oversight. No, 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 no. There's evil people running things, okay, and they can't steal your labors if they don't do this, if they don't find a way, and this is the trick. And again, we're all being forced to play this game, and I'm in it. You know, on one hand, yes, I admit I, I, I hate money. I utterly hate it. I wish to God it was never invented. I wish to God it was rendered irrelevant tomorrow, utterly neutered. I wish it would all starve to death, all these money lovers. Okay, I wish they'd all just go to another planet, man. Okay, just blast off. Get the hell out of here. Leave Earth alone because you're going to have to sooner or later. When God's will is established on Earth, there's not going to be any possibility for an advantage-disadvantage paradigm. And isn't that what it's all about? This wealth disparity? That's what it's all about, my friends. Okay, it's theft. It's oppression. I mean, anciently, you go back thousands of years. It's the same crap that's been going on. How do you think they steal your wealth? They steal your labor. And this is what's been going on. It didn't happen overnight. It's just like the frog in the waters now in the boiling water analogy. It didn't boil it real right away. You had to make it feel comfortable. You lulled it to sleep, right? They mesmerized us with things like television and entertainment, trinkets, knickknacks, and technology of every kind. Got our eye off the ball, and so here we are, man. I mean, we're we're done. It's at a rapid boil now. We the frogs are at a rapid boil. 
and we're all being boiled together, the rich and the poor and in between alike. So we're all on this ship of fools careening to destruction. And all we can do, the only way we can really jump ship is metaphorically in our hearts and minds and say, God, I welcome you into my heart and my mind. Help me to think the way you want me to think. I want to cope. I want to contend. I want to keep on. I want to, I, I want to ride this, this wave uh, 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 this, in this storm of, of madness. Okay, I want to stay on it. I want to, I want to do your will. I want to help. I want to do something concrete, something tangible. And he'll find a way for you. You'll have the right belief system. And you'll be able to stand before him someday with a clear conscience and be found worthy and deserving of inheriting a benefit.